Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Shin Hen Pass Colors, which is a hybrid of premium watercolor and gouache. This product review includes an unboxing of the product itself alongside a product test where I will test out the properties of the paints. And very last, I will be doing a speed painting video just to showcase how you can use the uh, past colors and also how they perform on watercolor paper. As always, don't forget to subscribe and follow my social media accounts, which are listed down below in the video description, Instagram, Facebook, as well as Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support and let's get started. I first have to say that I did receive these from Shin Hen Art directly. They did send me a box full of products and you guys can check out the unboxing in the video description. I will provide the link there. The Shin Hen Pass Colors were one of the um, most exciting things for me just because they are a hybrid of watercolor and gouache. And I have to be honest, I did not know that this sort of product existed. And lately I've been really experimenting a lot with the watercolor and gouache together to create some sort of painting and I really love the properties that are for watercolor and also for gouache they're very similar but you also have the whole like the gouache aspect where it's much more opaque and you've got a stronger pigment um, which can really really work um, uh, quite well when you're trying to get a really really nice kind of like um, value or contrast in your painting I did receive the box set of 48 colors and the colors are beautiful. You basically have everything you will ever need to be honest with you and you have a lot of wonderful colors that can be combined together to create really beautiful blends. The past colors themselves are a hybrid of the watercolor and the gouache which does contain the best refined pigments and purified gum arabic to produce highly saturated colors. What's really, really great about this product and something that I'm completely in love with is the fact that you can control the transparency or the opaque effect by adding or um, removing the water. So depending on how much water you use, you can create different effects that is more um, normal or considered gouache, or you can also go for the entire water effect. What's important to note, however, is that the colors do have a varying degree of transparency, ranging from transparent to semi-transparent to semi-opaque to full-on opaque. The color I'm using in this uh, kind of example right now is lilac, and it is marked as opaque completely, um, which means the pigment is very strong. And as you can see, I can actually do both kind of the gouache um, property where it's very str it's strongly pigmented and the color is very bright, vibrant, and opaque, and I can also dilute it with more water and it's going to appear like a watercolor, pretty much near transparent, which is really cool and really nice that it pretty much allows you to create some really gorgeous blends. Now onto the speed painting part of the video, I just want to first start off by saying that the image that I did use as a reference for this painting is credited to a photographer. Her name is Elizabeth Elder, and you can find her on Instagram at emacphoto. She does gorgeous photos and with beautiful models and just like the whole fantasy aspect I really, really love. You can find all of her descriptions or her information, I should say, down below in the video description. I will be providing all the links there. I chose this reference photo just because of the deep and dark contrast and I really wanted to push this past color product to its limit to see how dark and contrasting I could get my colors. I don't typically really draw with that many like dark colors in general. I like to have everything light and pretty and pink, but in this case I really wanted to push the whole like dark background and have like a galaxy effect almost that's quite subtle. Um, and I wanted to see if, if the, the past colors would be um, good for this. So I did choose this reference just because of this and also the fact that it was very pretty and it was a unicorn girl. The first thing I want to touch base on is the versatility of the product itself and the way that I was able to use it. Now before I was gifted this product, I was basically using my Schmincke watercolors and together with the Schmincke gouache. So I actually had to buy two separate products just to achieve the same look and feel that I was able to achieve with the past colors. And 
sort of the technique that I would approach in terms of, you know, painting a portrait would be to lay it on with uh, watercolor first and then slowly, gradually build up with the gouache on top and eventually sort of try to get to a realistic kind of feel with the gouache together with the watercolor. And with the, the, the past colors, I realized that I actually don't really need to worry about integrating watercolor and then putting gouache on top because it's all together in one product. And you can really use the product to your advantage. So you can either say, okay, I want this part of the face to be much more pigmented and uh, or opaque and in that case I could use a specific color or combine it with something else to create that effect rather than just have to keep building the watercolor on top of you know layer after layer after layer. As always, because I am a mixed media artist, I do like to use my Luminance pencils by Caran d'Ache and also Faber-Castell Polychromos. So together I wanted to see how well they could work on top of the past colors and they can work really good. Um, the blendability is possible and it's really, really great. And it hasn't changed compared to um, my previous product, which was with Schminka. Um, so if you want to use pencil crayon or colored pencils on top of the past colors, they do work and you won't have any issues. Also, vice versa, if you want to apply a, a layer of the past colors on top of your pencil work, this will also work really great. The trickiest part of this portrait for me was the hair, just because, actually for a couple different reasons. The first is the fact that I'm just really not that great at drawing hair that is super curly and super wavy, so I was trying to get the ringlets, but I'm really not good at it, so I have to keep practicing this part. Um, but the other aspect was in terms of painting in the hair and selecting the colors and making it work so that things were just not getting muddy together and you can see individual hair strands and it just was, um, it, there, was a, there was a clear contrast from the dark to the light. And I was also basing these shadows from the reference photo that I got from the photographer. So this was the trickiest part for me. And what I um, had the most difficulty would be the shadow aspect of, you know, where to draw like the shadows or paint in the shadows of the hair. And I actually had difficulties with the colors at first. And what I realized is um, by mixing it in with a little bit of the black, because the black color is opaque, um, which means it's very um, contrasting, it's very pigmented. So I could then combine this together with the, uh, for example, the ultramarine deep, which this one was semi-transparent. So with the semi-transparentness, I wasn't able to actually um, get so much of a deep color unless I mixed it together with the black. And this worked perfectly in the end where I was really able to get my deep, rich values. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, it also works really well with the white gouache from this collection. The white is also opaque, uh, so in the case that I wanted to do highlights on the face, I would mix the white with a color that I was using, or I would just use the white to add highlights in the eyes, on the lips, on the unicorn ho horn, in terms of the, the stars in the background or the highlights in the hair. Um, for the hair, I also did combine the white uh, past color together with maybe a lilac or a pink. And uh, this would create sort of a, a, a lighter version of that color that I did use for the hair. Uh, so this is sort of the techniques that I would use uh, to just build the contrast and build the highlights, build the darkness, and also uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic as well. The last bit I actually want to talk about is the characteristics of gouache and watercolor in general. Um, both of these um, sort of mediums do dry very quickly and this applies to on the painting and also on your palette. So if you have all kinds of paint still on your palette and it dries, do not worry. You can reactivate it by adding water, which is what I love so much about watercolor and gouache in general. And this sort of characteristic does also apply on the painting as well, which can be a bit tricky at the beginning, especially if you're a beginner at using a gouache, for example. When you're applying more layers on top of each other, you can actually reactivate the paint in which you can pick up some of the paint onto um, the color so that uh, either on the, on, on, the, on the painting itself or on your brush. And this can cause a bit of some muddy effects if you don't really know what you're doing. I want to cover this in a separate video in terms of like beginner gouache techniques because this is something that I find quite important and it would be a pretty interesting video to cover. 
Some people may not like this characteristic of gouache and watercolor, but to be honest with you, I find it sort of similar to oil, in which you can then use this to your advantage to really pick up some of the colors and blend some of the tones to get darker kind of shades or have a beautiful gradient. And this actually works in the same way as the oil in a way, where you can just like repick up some parts of the painting and keep reworking it. Of course, to avoid the whole muddiness and trying to, uh, <laughs> yeah, avoid this muddy problem, you just have to know how to work with it. So that's that, that just comes with practice, to be honest with you. And I think these topics will cover in a separate video. I want to do a whole series, like I mentioned, about you know beginner watercolor, beginner gouache. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a in a separate video. To basically summarize, I did finish this painting with some uh, fine liner, which is also um, the touch liners from Shinhan Art, and I also embellished it with some gold, which you can see around her unicorn ho horn and also around like the floral crown in her hair. I really love this extra detail, it just brings everything together. So I'm going to be posting this final on my Instagram tonight, and also on my Etsy will be available for purchase. That being said, I have to say I'm so excited about this product. It is absolutely wonderful to use and it's probably one of my favorites now. I've been using it ever since I received it in my recent portraits that you guys see on my Instagram. So I'm very happy, very excited, and I'm excited to see what more, uh, what other things I'll create with it. Thank you once again, Shanahan Art, for sending me the product for testing. And um, with that being said, I want to wish you guys all a lovely day. I hope you guys keep drawing. Don't ever give up and keep being awesome. We will see each other very soon. Bye.